it doesn't seem possible to do anything anymore without machines. Household chores. Industrial packaging of vegetables. Yet the tasks performed by machines have become far more complex. They work with you in the office. Robots take care of your pet. Implants in your fingertips enable you to feel magnetic fields. Robots display affection to you in retirement homes. The robots and machines could come in the form of a plastic cube, a small action figure, or a cubby baby seal. The ongoing development of artificial intelligence has sparked an exponential improvement in the appearance and abilities of machines. A far more simpler example is the smartphone. This device connects people with people and people with machines. But it's so much more than just a phone. It's a camera, calculator, calendar, clock, address book, game console, radio, heart rate monitor, fingerprint scanner, television. And because it's connected to the Internet, a font of all knowledge. Ever since smartphones were launched, the way we use them has changed. Instead of using them just to communicate with people, we are increasingly communicating with the device. Specific commands activate the phone's speech recognition. The more often you use this technology, the more diverse its responses will become. You train the machine and the machine is part of a much larger learning network. At the same time, we personalize the machine. The device learns preferences and habits. It is given a name and it becomes emotionalized. Emotions are a key aspect of the connection between man and machine, the man-sheen. If we no longer converse with our smartphones purely for practical reasons, and if we chat with our social robots for entertainment reasons, we have imbued the machine with human-like qualities. Our phone has become our friend. The picture gets even bigger. If you live in the smart home, everything is interconnected. If you live in a smart city, everything is available in the city cloud. The transformation of the machine into a man-sheen in everyday life is a product of the interplay between man and machine. Man gives it greater importance. He invites the machine to enter into his social environment. And although most of us always carry around our little robot friend in our pockets, the idea of artificial intelligence and robotics is still associated with utopian visions of the future. The robot takes away my job. The robot starts to think for itself. The robot can't be turned off anymore. The plastic cube, the action figure, the baby seal, the smartphone have one thing in common. They have a kill switch. So far, it has been up to people to decide when they want to interact with the machine and when not. Another aspect of this evolution is the growing physical proximity of man and machine. Let's stick with the phone. When the telephone became an everyday object, it was kept at a fixed location in the house. Later, it became a cordless device to carry around in the home. Smartphones are now constant companions. They're worn directly in our bodies as high-tech watches. People have a close relationship with their machines. They use them many times a day and never turn them off. The distance between man and machine in virtual reality seems almost completely eliminated. We physically connect with the machine using glasses, gloves, joysticks and treadmills, leaving us at the mercy of the world of the machine. Finally, we make the machine part of the human body. Look at the health sector. Think of pacemakers and cochlear implants. Many people's living conditions are tremendously improved by machines. Human acceptance of machines is increasing. Man is open to the machine and, to a certain extent, has already entered into a dependent relationship. The machine is clearly in a dependent relationship. After all, it is purely a creation of man. Leaving our everyday lives behind for a moment, let's look to the future. Why shouldn't I take advantage of robots and let them work in my place? Why shouldn't I spend my free time in a virtual world to experience things 
that can't be experienced in my real environment? Why should I only have machines implanted in my body if I suffer from physical disabilities? These questions are perfectly valid. Future developments could be complex and raise additional issues. It's important to use common sense when you introduce new technology. Working robots make sense in many areas, but what will happen to the people who previously did their work? How can we integrate machine labor into the production cycle? It is fun to dive into a virtual world, but what happens when it becomes difficult to distinguish one world from the other? It is possible to improve one's own body with machines, but doesn't this create a new kind of human, a new form of social inequality? Man is converging with the machine not only because he has to, but because he wants to. With all these questions and countless more in mind, it's important to think ahead and continue researching. It takes courage and reason in science and academia to approach the evolution of machines in a wise and reflective manner. It's important to know the limits that should not be exceeded and the boundaries that can be crossed. At the same time, it's up to politics, society, and every human being to come to terms with the man-sheen to allow us to benefit from it as much as possible and to realize when the time has come to take a break and use the kill switch. <laughs>